Hello everybody and welcome to Wagered on Tilt IMT and today I wanted to go over variance and the standard deviation within Microsoft Excel. This is going to be a very basic explainer. I'm not going to be going too deep on the explanations of this information. I'm just going to be showing you roughly how it can be used, how you can use the formulas within Microsoft Excel, and then eventually you're going to start using this stuff within models, but I want to be sure that people understand this from the ground up. Now in here, I may not say things that are 100% accurate based upon statistical textbooks. I'm trying to explain this in the best way I could as if explaining it to somebody that has never heard this before or someone that's trying to learn it without scaring them off with a lot of crazy lingo that can be found in mathematics and statistics. So again, this is an introductory level to this information. If you have problems with the way I'm explaining this stuff, feel free to try and give a better explanation down in the comments below. Absolutely would love that. If you think any of this needs correction or adjustment, feel free to make a comment below. So with that warning ahead of you, let's go ahead and dive in. So this is variance and standard deviation. Now, again, we're gonna get into depth on how to use these and how to uh, notice things and detect things with the variance and standard deviation. However, I do wanna explain in Microsoft Excel how you can get this information out. Now, standard deviation is gonna be important when you're looking at different curves and probabilities and you wanna make sure things aren't typically two standard deviations out and you wanna make sure whether or not you have high variance or low variance. Now, when you measure this information, it's about the deviation and ways that it is dispersed from the mean. So that may sound really complicated right now, but it's really not that bad. I'm gonna give you a quick example here in Microsoft Excel and you'll see why it's not that complicated. So let's first take a look at this. So right here, we wanna see what is the deviation of 10 from this data set. So in here, we have a whole bunch of numbers. We have several 10s, some 29s, some 32s, 34s, 47s, 48s, 50s, and a 60. So we wanna see how much does this deviate from this data set. So to do that, you'd wanna find the difference between this number and the average. So if we were to do that, We'd come in here underneath where it says deviation, and I'm just gonna say equal A2 minus the average of this information. Now, when we go ahead and close that off, that's gonna give us negative 23.95. So in here, I'm just gonna put the dollar sign because if you don't know, the dollar sign helps lock this into place so it won't shift when I copy and paste this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift that all the way down and hit that. And now we have our deviations for each piece of information. So if we're looking at this information, we're gonna say that the deviation of 10 is negative 23.95. And again, that's from this entire data set. So the next thing then is, you know, how is this useful? How is this helpful? Well, first you may wanna find the average of this information. So if we were to go ahead and say equals average of this data set here, you'll notice that it's a very, very low number. This is close enough to be zero at this point, so we'll just consider this zero. So when you're looking at this information straight, the problem becomes that you have a bunch of negatives and positive numbers. So when that happens, it throws off the averaging of this information. So the way to solve this is to turn things positive. So what you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and square the deviation. So here we can go ahead and square the deviation, and there's gonna be two ways to do this. You can say, take the deviation and times it by itself. That is one way to do it. And now these numbers definitely explode and get much larger, and that's okay. That's not really much of a problem right now. Um, the other way that you can go ahead and do this is, this is called a hat. It's the symbol above the six. So you'd say B2 hat two, and that's a way to say B2 squared and it's gonna give you the same value there. We have found our deviation by taking a value from the data set, and then we went ahead and subtracted the average. And we do that for every number in our data set, and then we take that deviation and then we square it. Now when we go ahead and find the average, we're gonna actually come up with a real value. So if we come here and come down, so that is gonna give us the variance. So our variance is 185.28. So that looks a little complicated. You could do this on your data sets and manually calculate all this stuff out. The nice thing though is there is a way to calculate this information within Microsoft Excel. So under here, variance, we're just gonna go ahead and put in the formula. It's gonna be equal 
var, and then you're going to have p or s. p is for population, which means you have all of the information possible within your data set. Sample is when you're sampling of the population. There's different reasons why you'd want to use population versus sample. For me, I typically just stick to sample because I'm pretty sure I don't have all of the information within the population, and that includes for sports or anything else. So I like to just stick with the sample. If you have a reason to go with population, go for it. We'll probably get into that much further down the road, but right now I think sample is good enough. So you're gonna say var.s, and then you're gonna select your actual data set. And then we're gonna go ahead and see what that comes up with. Now that comes up with 193.34 versus our 185.28. So the reason for this is most likely gonna be rounding error. So as you can see, this number here, 193.34, is different than what we have down here. Now here's a quick little thing. I will switch this to the actual population version. And there you go. Now we've got pretty much an exact match. Now again, that is because I'm using an example data set where in theory this could be your entire population, which is why it would come to that. However, you're not usually working with populations. Again, if you want to use the population value, go for it. I often will stick with the sample because I'm not positive I have all the information I need to count it as the population. Again, when you're using these types of things, it's in much more complicated situations than this. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep that in here so that you can see how they match for now. So now we have standard deviation. Now standard deviation is another unit of measure that you're gonna use in your models and statistics. But for here, we're just gonna show the relationship between variance and standard deviation. So in here, if I were to say equal stdev and then choose the P for population, I'll select my data set again and we come out to 13.612. Now the interesting thing here is that if I were to take the variance and say equal an sqrt, which is square root of this number, it's gonna be the same number. Or if we were to take the standard deviation and square it like we did before, it gets us back to our variance. So variance and standard deviation are gonna be very closely related because it is merely the square root of one or the squaring of another. Now understanding this is gonna be important down the road, however, the best way to think of it is that I like to use standard deviation to figure out you know, where do I fall within the probabilities and how does that fall within some kind of graph and chart whereas variance allows me to see the dispersion or how spread out the information is. Is it over dispersed, meaning it's really scattered all over a line plot, or is it very tight knit information that I can plot against easily? So depending upon the variance, that will also dictate whether or not you can use certain types of models. Whether you can use a Poisson or any other type of distribution will really depend upon some of this information, whether the standard deviation hits a certain number, whether the variance is high, whether it is low, and you'll learn about this also with other things. You'll have to learn how things are skewed, which means again, are they heavily shifted right, left, is it in the middle with a nice little bell curve? Right, so that's what these are gonna be used for. So again, this is just very introductory ways to figure this information out. So the standard deviation is a way to detect whether or not the information is contained within 68% of the information. So one standard deviation within a regular shaped bell curve is typically going to be within 68% of the data. So if I were to say equal the average, and again, remember this is on a regular bell curve, so we'd say the average or the mean, is 33.95. So if we were to go to the left of the mean, we'd say equal the mean minus one standard deviation. And then if we we're gonna go right of the mean, we'd say the mean plus one standard deviation. That means that any of the numbers that fall between here are gonna account for 68% of the data. So if we were to come in here and look at this, we would say these numbers right there, those are gonna account for 68% of the data which can also be interpreted sometimes as 68% probability if your number falls within this value set. So that is it for variance and standard deviation. As you can see within Microsoft Excel, they use a lot of nice formulas for you. It's very easy to calculate this stuff out. As long as you understand what the information is being used for and what it's trying to show you, 
then you can go ahead and continue moving on and building and developing models. If you don't understand that information, you're going to want to try and relearn this as quickly as possible. This is critical to being able to choose what types of distributions to use, what type of information you have, whether or not you're using the correct information, and it will let you quickly see things that maybe you don't need to waste time on. Oftentimes people will build models just to find out that the variance is way too high and that they can't get a model to fit for what they thought would work when they could have just looked at the variance from the beginning and started making educated decisions from there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about this, please drop them down below. Again, if you think this was too basic of an explainer or I didn't cover information correctly, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and see what you think. If you do have any questions and want to reach me directly, you can reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt or in the unabated Discord as the T. If you think this information is helpful, useful, or any of my content is helpful, useful, or even annoying, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. So that is it from me today. Until next time, happy wagering.